Chris with Zyltek. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install all the components for a Ramps 1.4 board and uh, connect it to a Mega 2560 Arduino board. Uh, we've got all the components here. We've got your motors for X, Y, and Z axes and your extruder uh, along with all the cables, stepper motor controller boards, uh, limit switches to stop the motors from moving once it reaches a certain point jumpers the uh, ramps 1.4 and the mega 25 16 or 60 board uh, we also have a a control screen here that we can hook up as well so we can monitor and we don't have to have a computer directly connected to it to control it First off, what we want to do, typically when you receive this board, the stepper motor controller boards are already installed, however the jumpers are not. That is because, depending on your certain situation, you'll need to either set it up for 1 16th steps or 1 32nd steps. Um, typically, out of the box, you, you kind of just want to go with 1 16th per millimeter steps. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is how to install the jumpers. You've got pins that are located here underneath each of the sockets. You can simply just go ahead and jump all of the, the pins here and that will give you for the uh, particular stepper motor controllers here, the A4988s. These are going to be 16 steps. So with all the jumpers installed on the board, that will give you that functionality. You see that I have all the jumpers set. It doesn't matter which direction they go, um, just as long as they're covering the pins. So what we want to make sure now is when we install the stepper motor controller boards, that we match up the ground connection, GND, to the actual ground on the ramps board which is typically the top right pin so the way we would insert these and you got to be careful with them you could easily bend these these pins that go into the socket so we want to make sure that we have our ground which is right here and it's going to match up with the ground here so we'll just insert those like so and we'll do that. This is for extruder 0 and extruder 1. So that's uh, your tool 1 and 2. And we will do that for also the X axis. Make sure your pins are lined up. Don't force it in. You could easily bend those pins. You want to kind of just work them in if they don't go in easily. and make sure they're firmly in. And next, what you want to make sure of is that these controller boards do generate a, quite a bit of heat and they come with heat sinks. These are critical. You must have these on there, otherwise your boards will shut down and you will not be able to use your board at all. Um, and it could actually result in failure of the boards and you'll have to replace it. So these are critical and they've got double-sided tape on them. So what you can do is on the center chip on each of the controller boards is just simply firmly press to have those heat sinks adhere to those little chips on the top. We have the heat sinks installed and firmly pressed onto the stepper motor controller boards we're going to take the ramps 1.4 and install it onto the mega 2560 they do line up um, there's only one way you can actually install this so it's pretty much foolproof you still need to be careful of the pins that they don't go in crooked they make sure you make sure that they install seamlessly and you don't want to push down on one side more than the other, so you want to make sure that you put evenly press all the way down. It's kind of tricky. 
just make sure you're not going to mash any of the other electronics. <clears throat> Once you have that installed, you should see no gaps in between. If you do, make sure you just give it a slight press to make sure it's seated up properly. And then once that's complete, you have your ramps and Mega 2560 ready to go for everything else. Now that we have our ramps board ready to go, we are going to set up the limit switches. We have an X, Y, and Z limit switch. Uh, these are the three wire limit switches. Uh, some people prefer the two wire switches. The three wire switches actually provide an LED feedback so you know when the uh, the end stop is opened or closed. When it's closed it will light up. Um, you can connect the jumper cable to it and once you do that you will look for this bay of pins here. Uh, these are going to be your X min, X max, Y min, Y max, and Z min, Z max. Um, typically it really depends on the configuration if you're going to want the if it to detect the minimal or the max. Um, typically I go with the min, uh, the first that starts in X, and then the first two are X, the second two are Y, and the third set is Z. Uh, it is polarity specific, so make sure your wet, red wire lines up with the positive, which is marked on the board. You can see right here there's a plus for positive. So we'll take our X min, and that's going to be our connection there and then we can take another limit switch connect the jumper it only goes in one way make sure our positive is going to line up I'm going to skip one set because that would be for the X max and we're going to go on the Y min and we're going to take our last jumper and our last limit switch hook that up and not get tangled up everywhere make sure our red wire is going to insert right there so now we have our X Y and Z limit switches connected cable management is important here once you start with wiring but that's uh, everyone has their own certain technique so however you can keep it nice and neat that is key because if you do have wires all bunched up around here, heat can build up and, and of course cause a shutdown. And that's of course what you want to avoid. Switches, we can go ahead and hook up our actual motors to the board itself. Uh, typically with 3D printing, you're going to have four motors. Uh, depending on the configuration, you have your X, Y, Z, and your extruder motor. So what we want to make sure of is that the polarity on the board itself is going to match up. And typically our red wire is going to, <clears throat> from this orientation, red wire is always going to be on the right for this. So we can take our X axis and you can see the designation on each of the sets of pins. We've got X, Y, and Z, and then we have our extruder 0 and extruder 1. So with the red wire to the right, we're just going to simply slide it on gently. Don't force it. It should grip on there quite easily. And we'll take each of our motors. That was our X motor. The red, again. We got our Y. We have our Z. The red on the right again. We're going to go on the top set of pins. And then for our extruder. We're going to go with extruder zero. That is actually the first tool that the printer will, will use. It start, always starts at zero and it goes up from there with our red wire on the right. 
So we have our X, Y, and Z and extruder motors hooked up. Again, wire management is critical. This is not exactly pretty, but it's showing you how to set up everything properly and get it connected. In this step, I'm going to show you how to connect the uh, the screen for the board, so you or so you don't have to actually have a computer to monitor. Um, it does have an SD card port here. If you wanted to just copy some G code onto the, an SD card and insert it, you can you'll be able to actually select it from a menu here and have the job run that way. I've uh, removed the the motors just so you can get a better view of how the connections are going to be made. Uh, this, the, mon the screen actually comes with a smart adapter for the ramps board. Um, it only inserts one way and it will be installed at the very back of the board and it slides in fairly easily. You want to make sure all the pins line up and snap in nice and smooth. So now you have two sockets here one is for the SD card reader and one is for the actual screen itself. Uh, these ribbon cables will connect to the back. You've got EXP1 and 2 and they will line up with the same designation on the smart adapter board. The ribbon cables will only be able to, you can only insert them one way. They have a little notch here that lines up here. You can just slide them in. They, those go in really easy. Make sure that they get in all the way down and then we've got our EXP1 and 2 it's a little tricky to see on the board but you can tell there is a little bit of it peeking out there you've got EXP1 and EXP2 and you just simply match up the designation that way so EXP1 of course to 1 and 2 to two, and that will give you the capability of monitoring and controlling your machine without a PC.